1968 was a great year in film, giving us timeless Oscar-nominated classics like Bonnie and Clyde, The Graduate, and The Winner in the Heat of the Night. Two more films were snubbed the Oscars that year. Two films I happen to love very much. The original Planet of the Apes and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, I think we all know that 2001 Space Odyssey is the winner here, um, and I don't think anybody's going to argue that. I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Adam. Oh, hell no! I completely forgot, for the sake of this joke, that Jaden was the other winner of the Movie Feuds guest thing, whatever it was called, and he's going to be arguing with me on this episode! I suppose you'd like it to continue, huh, Jason? Jaden? Carl? Absolutely. It's Planet of the Apes versus 2001 The Space Odyssey on Movie Foods. In the beginning of 2001 A Space Odyssey, we get our first cast of characters. A bunch of monkeys. For a film that's almost 50 years old, these primates are remarkably well done. That has a lot to do with the creative camera placement and lighting, but we will dip into that more later. To my recollection, there isn't even any speaking for a good 30 minutes or so into the flick. And once Stanley Kubrick has done monkeying around, thank you, he introduces us to scientific specialist Dr. Haywood R. Floyd as he continues his investigation of a monolith discovered at the Clavius base. Sounds like my doctor's appointment last week, right? No? Okay. Where is this base located, you ask? The moon! This is a very heavy three-part act, with the first two sections really paving the way for the important finale, with another set of characters. Dr. Frank Poole and Dr. Dave Bowen get most of the interesting moments. Mainly Dave with his communication with the brilliant and deadly AI named Hal. This flick features alien tech, talking computers, angry monkeys, space exploration, time travel, and a star child. In other words, impossible to top. Two words, Linda Harrison. My love, my bride, my Nova. I'm looking forward to the wedding. Sure, 2001 is an incredible looking film, but that's probably one of the only compliments I can give it. Kubrick gave the actors too many bland directions, almost making the characters feel unrelatable as actual human beings. The exact opposite can be said about Scuffner's masterpiece. Charlton Heston delivers an outstanding performance as astronaut George Taylor. Heston's brilliant acting makes you believe a man has entered a planet under controlled by intelligent apes. This makes the audience member think to themselves that this is exactly how they'll react if they found themselves under the exact same situation. Other cast members include Rodney MacDonald, Kim Hunter, and Maurice Evans, who plays as the apes of Cornelius, Zyra, and Dr. Sayers, who ends up bringing everything they have into these roles. And did I forget to mention Linda Harrison? Cast of the Planet of the Apes is great, and it's easy to get swept up in some of the political intrigue between the human and ape relations. This is me sweeping. But there is an adjustment that needs to be made early on. The actors all have a very Broadway stage performance feel. I was not used to this after watching mainly movies from this decade, so getting reacquainted with the more bombastic script reading takes some getting used to, and it lessens the believability for me. Granted, the rubber monkey costumes don't help either. Trust me, when I state and prove how much better Planet of the Apes is at story than 2001, things are truly going to go bananas. <laughs> Uh, watch it? Here's the deal. I've seen this film twice. Once in high school, 75 years ago, and once last week for this feud, because I do some research. It's a very interpretive piece of art, much like my lovemaking, and I've read many theories about it. Perhaps there's a real matter-of-fact breakdown of everything, but for me it's a story of life and death, of man's understanding of the universe and the role they play. That role can be as big or as small as they can perceive it. These black statues show up multiple times throughout the movie, and the beings that come in contact with them gain knowledge previously locked away. Early on we see monkeys learn how to manipulate simple objects like bones and weapons and later tools. 
we then transition to a space station orbiting the moon. Man has come a long way thanks to these assumed alien monoliths. Some say these things are spiritual, while others think alien. In either case, they are building blocks for the mind. In the final act, our protagonist is swept through time and space as he learns of the creation of the universe, the sculpting of planets, the history of the world, and eventually outgrows his human shell, becoming one with the stars. It's deep stuff and could easily be dissected a million different ways. And that is the true brilliance of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Thank you. Now let's hear Jaden sell you on Talking Apes. Planet of the Apes is an apes and adventure. Okay, yeah, I'm not proud of that pun. Yeah, oh, that's a good start. Throughout this journey, we see politics handled in a perfect manner when compared to other sci-fi films as <coughs> Star Wars Prequels. <coughs> we witness the rules of society flip as the role of apes becomes more dominant with the role of man. 2001 is a story about evolution and the endless possibilities of how far we can rarely go. Then on the other hand, Planet of the Apes flips the tables and talks about the social and political issues of the time, such as violence, prejudice, religion, and power. Wait a minute. We still have those issues almost 50 years later. Okay, this is pretty much a no-brainer here, but I'm still going to try to defend Planet of the Apes. Even though 2001's music is more iconic, its effects lives up to modern day cinema, and each frame looks like a painting. Um, forget about what I just said there. Even though 2001's score is more iconic, Jerry Goldsmith's score suits the film more, and at the end of the day, isn't that what you want out of a film soundtrack for most? The set pieces were fantastic, and the so-called rubber monkey masks were great for its time. And the reason why I say for its time, can you imagine how great this film will look if it had the technology that the reboot possesses today? And for my closing remarks, I have three words to say. Apes on horses. I find it darling and somewhat refreshing that you're even entertaining arguing this round with me. Kubrick's vision was light years ahead of everyone else. People will go on about how Lucas brought spaceships and realistic renders of space to the big screen. Kubrick was doing this shit almost a decade before episode 4 hit the theaters and the effects hold up better today. The brilliant opening features no dialogue unless you speak monkey and the cinematography is champagne filmmaking. The director isn't afraid to let shots linger, perhaps to a fault at times. It's hard to peel your eyes off the screen though. The music is not just present here like it is in most films, no. It's required and crucial to the story. Queuing up at key moments to help fill in the details. Every time the monolith is discovered and a character is awoken, Requiem blasts into the picture. The Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra delivers a good bulk of this beautiful score which is never in short supply. Although there are a few key spots where no noise is present or just the breathing through a spacesuit can be heard. Atmosphere is top form, and even though Planet of the Apes contains some really great sweeping vistas, it's not near the level of 2001. I'm not gonna lie, when Jaden suggested this feud, I shuddered thinking about revisiting anything from the 60s. It's the same reason my grandparents are gonna die without me by their side. I was blown away by the quality of both of these masterpieces. Planet of the Apes is far better than it has any right to be, considering the subject matter. The story sucked me in and never let go. 2001 had the opposite effect. Its lack of story is what kept me engaged. I was yearning for my own monolith to uncover the secrets of this book adaptation, but alas, I was left to my own puny mind to sort things out. Thank you for joining me, Jaden. You will never be on this show again. Thanks, Adam, for this great opportunity. Now, I have entered this contest hoping to get more exposure for my channel, and I did that. I have gained an astonishing amount of free subscribers. So if you guys could check out my channel, that would be highly appreciated. Wow, inviting you on the show wasn't enough. Had to double dip on the self-promotion. Okay, once again, thank you for joining me. And now for you, comment below, vote for your winner, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. Now get off my channel, you damn dirty ape. Couldn't resist, could you? Resistance is futile. Wrong film, not even close. Damn! Quick, Sharif, distract the viewers by putting up another picture of the beautiful Nova while I make my escape. Very slowly.